up my people it's your boy mr getting it done welcome back to the channel if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing smash that like button for the youtube algorithm and share this video with somebody that may need to hear it in your camp in your circle in your family okay so on this channel we talk about credit and we talk about real estate and these are the two things the two vehicles that i've utilized to create wealth for me and my family so i'm sharing it with you guys so that you guys can do the same and level up for the small time that we're here we should be living our best life and we should be at our greatest versions of all time my people okay so i get this question a lot and i want to put it to bed because a lot of you are striving for this benchmark not knowing that it's really not going to do anything for you right so what is that bro what is that man so you know everybody wants to ask so that i get this question a lot right is is how do i get to an 850 credit score how do I get to an 850 credit score? So let me explain something, right? Let me preface with this. So having an 850 is not going to get you approved for anything more. You're not going to get a better interest rate. You're not going to get offered anything differently than somebody with a 750. 750 and 850 is pretty much the same thing. You get approved for the same products. If you went into the bank with a 850, I went into the bank with a 750, I would come out with the same products and interest and whatever that you did, right? So the A50 is only for bragging rights. It's for those individuals that are just looking to achieve this goal personally, and they're not looking to go out and get approved for the best rates for an auto loan, for a mortgage, etc. right? 750 opens the same doors that an A50 does. Okay, so keep that in mind. So those of you that are striving to get to an 850 thinking that you're going to get a better interest on your mortgage or your auto loan or whatever the case is, that's that's not the deal. So now there's another there's another pro. Okay? So there's a, there's one pro to getting up that high, right? If you hit an 850 and I'm going to go over here shortly, um I got some things written down on on how you get, how you can get to an 850 for those of you that want to get there. But um there's one there's one pro okay and that is it let's say you get to an 850 and let's say for unfortunately life happens and you know you make a late payment or you miss a payment right that's going to hurt your score dramatically you know you're talking 50 60 points on a late payment so if you had an 850 and you you unfortunately you know life happens and you make a late payment on one of your accounts then your score will drop 50 points you know you're still at 800 right so you can still go out and get, you know, uh, pretty much anything you want with an 800. So that's kind of like the, you know, that's kind of like the caveat, man. That's kind of like, you know, if you do get to an 850, you have that luxury, you have that buffer. Okay. So anything above a 750 is pretty much a buffer in case you do end up eventually, you know, running into life and something happens. And you end up making a late payment and boom and your score drops right so you have that buffer to keep you in you know in an excellent standing if you will now uh i wrote some things down for those of you that are looking to get to an a50 okay the average person that has got i don't know anybody personally and myself i the highest i've been is a42 but i i might hit either this year or next year I might hit that um, that 850 benchmark because of the data points that you have to hit in order to get to that level. So, for those of you that are wondering, let's break this down, okay? So, credit card utilization. So, your credit cards ac across all of your accounts, it has to be at zero utilization. What that simply means is you cannot carry over balances. Every single month, okay, so what if you watch my video on how to pay your credit cards okay so a lot of people a lot of us are paying our credit cards you know on the due date and then reusing them the next day not knowing that you know you use them after the statement date right so your credit card has two two dates right you have your due minimum due uh excuse me minimum payment due and then you have your statement date so when you make your minimum payment due that balance let's say you had a 300 dollars balance right that balance will not report out to zero even though you paid it down let's say let's say you paid it down on the 10th right you paid you paid your car down to zero right that that activity that zero amount is not going to get reported out until after your statement date 
right? So your statement date is generally three to five days after your minimum payment date. So if you have a credit card, pull up that account, look at those dates and become familiar with those. So if your, if your minimum payment date is on the 10th, okay, pay your card down to zero and don't use it until after the statement date. So that's what that means, right? So after the statement date, it'll report out to zero. So you have to have a zero utilization across all of your credit cards accounts, okay, to get to this 850. Um, you have to have 100% payment history, okay? No derogatories, no late payments, no nothing, 100%, okay? Uh, no derogatories, I just said that, okay? So we have zero utilization, okay? We have no derogatories, and we have zero, your, your, your payment history has to be 100%, okay? So payment history 100%, uh utilization zero and then zero derogatories okay in addition to that my beautiful people um your average age your average age across all your accounts needs to be at nine plus years so <laughs> that's the most difficult data point to hit right because in order for you to hit that type of data point, you have to have at least a mortgage or an account that you've had for an extended period of time. We're talking 20, 30 years, right? So most people that hit or get to that 850 mark, they've had a mortgage in their name for over 20 years, for at least 20 years, and they're at least 44 years old because that's kind of achievable, right? So if you get a mortgage right when you turn 18, 20 years later, you're 38, right? So by 44, you should be hitting these data points so you can get up to 850. So on average, generally speaking, a person that would have an 850 credit score is somebody that's at least a minimum 44 years of age, okay? Because they're at that point and they've had a mortgage or they had an account open for, for over like 20 years, that brings your average age up, okay? So I myself, I've been building credit, you know, since I was like 19, 20, Right, and now I'm 40. So for 20 years I've been building credit, and my average age is about six and a half years. So like across all of my accounts, right? So I still got three years to go, which is extremely difficult to hit because there's no age. You know what I mean? Like they take the the they take the the age across all your accounts, the average age. Okay, and then as you start opening up new accounts, as you start going, that average age goes down. Right. So you're kind of oh, so if you're like going out and getting an auto loan or, you know, a credit card or this or that, you know, every so often, every two or three years, your score, your average age is going to be going down because when you add a new account, it kind of it, it brings the average age down. So to get to a nine year and, and higher. You got to put in some work and you got to be disciplined. So it's, uh, and this is not easy to do. Right. So that's why I like hitting these benchmarks have to be just like a personal goal for you because you're really not going to reap any benefits as i explained in the beginning of getting to an 850 besides the buffer that's pretty much like the only thing that you're getting okay um you have to have a, a total a minimum of a minimum account you have to have 21 accounts minimum okay so that can be credit cards um you know mortgage auto loan student loan personal loan you got to have 21 accounts okay reporting on your credit report so that's that's another that's another not easy benchmark right that's another benchmark that's not easily attainable because a lot of people cannot juggle that many accounts right you know you can have 10 credit cards and you may you know you may not be able to to, to juggle those properly and you may make a late payment if they're not on auto pay etc so that's another data point that's that that could be troubling to hit for some people Okay, and then lastly, my people, uh, credit inquiries. Okay, so you have to have zero credit inquiries within the last two years. Okay, so that's inquiries and not, you know, you can remove inquiries relatively easily. Um, you know, so if you had an inquiry or two, you can just get those removed and then boom, you know, you'll be able to hit your, your benchmark if you do have the other data points lined up. So that's pretty much it, my people, right? I wrote all this stuff down, you know what I'm saying? I'm a FICO certified specialist, so I understand credit. I'm a credit expert. I know how the, the algorithm works. I know how everything is generated. Although FICO 10 is coming out, it, it, it's already out. Some banks have adopted it. That's another video, but you know, that may hurt the metrics 
um, that I just explained, but for the most part, based on the FICO 8 model, those are the data points that you got to hit in order to get to an A50. So there it is, my people. Those of you that are trying to get to an A50, you know what I'm saying? Good luck. You know, like I said, you know, I, you know, I've been doing this for, for some time and the highest that I've ever been is A42. Um, you know, and I'm not shooting for the A50 personally. Like, that's not a personal goal, but I do want my score high in case, you know, stuff happens. You know what I'm saying? But I can walk into the bank with a 750 and get the same thing like I mentioned, man. So if that sheds some light, if that answered your question, smash that like button. Tell your people. Share this video. Let me know how I did. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below, and I'll answer those with a separate video. And until next time, my peeps, stay beautiful, stay healthy, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.